Starlink Battle for Atlas. This was a game I was always interested in. The concept of a toys to life game has always been fascinating to me. And now there's one where you get to go on a huge space adventure with the ship that you get to build yourself. No matter how you spin it, that's really cool. Also, the Nintendo fanboy in me saw Fox McCloud in the Switch version, and boy, sign me up! I wasn't entirely sure of what to expect when going into this game, and honestly, that was the most exciting part. I just really wanted to go into space, man. I don't care what you ask me to do, just let me do it in space. The game takes place in the Atlas star system. The mothership, Equinox, is attacked by the Forgotten Legion and crashes, with the captain taken hostage. Luckily, there is still the entire Starlink crew to work with to stop the Forgotten Legion and their leader, Grax, before any of their evil plans come to fruition. Then there's Star Fox, baby! Honestly, this crossover is such a perfect fit. It doesn't really feel like a Star Fox game, no, but considering Star Fox is also a group of established peacekeeping space explorers, this totally works. And yes, I played as Fox the entire time. So one of the big selling points with this game, of course, is that it comes with this form of a special controller mount for use with a plethora of real life ships, with swappable pilots, wings, and weapons. And with the power of special technology that may as well be magic, you just take a piece of the ship off, you put a new one on, and then boom, it pops up in the game. The controller actually feels fine too. It looks weird having a giant ship attached to a controller, but it's totally out of the way and it's super light and weight, so no complaints here. Didn't think that was gonna happen. And besides, once a ship piece is registered, you can sort of turn on a digital version of the game, therefore you can then use a pro controller. If you want to add a new piece to your arsenal, you gotta revert back to the controller mount because that's the way it recognizes that stuff, but it's nice to know that there are options here. Getting the digital version of the game eliminates the need for physical toys outright, so it's really up to you how you want to approach things. Quite frankly though, I really dig these figures. They're really nicely done, there's a bunch of variety with them. It's cool stuff. And then we go into the gameplay itself, and what we're presented with here is a pretty simple premise. You get given a bunch of missions, and when you're tackling one, you go to the point of the map where it asks you to go, and then you do the thing. There are space battles, research, exploration, item collecting, a bit of puzzle solving. There's even a strong element of resource management here too. You take control of these bases across the planets that you have the choice with what that base does. Like every so often, I'll get a notification that a shipment of Electrum has reached one of my bases and then boom, it goes into my inventory. It's kind of cool. They'll also often get attacked by enemy forces as well, so you can't just let them sit there. You gotta defend them. And boy, there are also a lot of planets here too. It's not just a matter of completing missions here and there, but you gotta make sure that these planets stay under your control and you know what's going on at all times. Which can be kind of challenging, but it's easy to manage because all you gotta do is basically push a button, aim your ship to the sky, you wait a couple seconds, and then boom. You're in space, free to go wherever you want. It's so seamless and very satisfying every time. And whenever you do reach a new planet, it is a constant reminder that this game is shockingly good looking. Realistically, the tasks that you do can feel kind of repetitive at times. Once you have the gist of things that the game asks you to do, you kind of just keep doing it just on a different level. But seeing what each of these planets had to offer visually kept me going. I'm just exploring an entire galaxy here, man. I'm happy to see whatever type of planets this place has to offer. They're all so bright and colorful and each one is varied stylistically. It's, it's really nice. And then say if I didn't want to do a main story mission, sometimes the option shows up to just request a side mission to do. Just because you can. That's one of my favorite parts about this game. I didn't expect this going in, but it gives you a lot of freedom. The whole toys to life element does pop in from time to time to let you know that some weapons will work better on the enemy you're about to tackle. But honestly, I kind of just found a combination that I liked and stuck with it for the most part. Everything here is upgradable, so once I leveled up, foes could not stand a chance. Obviously, the adventure as a whole would be a lot easier if you had every single weapon on you, but it's not necessary to have a good time. And I would actually be kind of interested to see what other types of ship combinations that people end up using. 
I stuck to the R wing with one weapon being fire and the other one being ice, but really there are just a ton of possibilities. And we've kind of established by now that the game is pretty simple in premise, it's just you keep doing missions over and over. The question is, is the game fun? And yeah, for sure. It's not an adventure that's filled with intense action at all times, because really, some of my favorite moments were just flying around and looking for some new minerals or some new animals to fill my research collection. The combat is somewhat simplistic at times, often just consisting of rotating around the enemies and mashing the attack buttons, but honestly, I still didn't hate it. Considering this game is a whole lot more than just going through space, guns blazing, I'm pretty happy with combat that challenges me to be agile enough to move on to even more objectives. I don't want to get stuck in a 10-20 minute battle. But if you want those more action heavy battles, that is when the prime battles come in. These are like these really big foes that require a bit more skill and determination to take down. Sometimes you can even utilize the special skills that your pilot has equipped. Like Fox can call upon his teammates to help him, and a remix of Cornarius theme plays. It's actually really cool. But yes, of course, Star Fox. A lot of us were naturally wondering what this little fairy guy was gonna bring to the table. That's what had me the most interested, and I know it's that way for many others as well. So like I said, typically at any point in the adventure you have the choice between multiple missions at one time that you can go and tackle. In the Switch version, you have an exclusive set of missions on top of that as well, that you can tackle whenever you want. And the premise? Well, Fox and company need to find Wolf and stop whatever he's doing. Doesn't really matter what Wolf is doing, you just know he's bad, and he looks creepy, and he's eating some like meat thing, and he just, he just seems dastardly, so we gotta stop him. Initially, I really felt like this whole Fox Incorporation was going to be shoehorned into the Switch version just for the sake of it. But like I said before, that is not the case at all. Where these missions and kind of the game as a whole shine is not just that Fox is just another optional character that you get to play as. Throughout the adventure, he is interacting with all of these different characters that you come across. He is a part of this world. Our ships are the same size. Math isn't your thing, is it? Ha! <laughs> Feisty too. I like it. It's almost as if this game was actually designed to have Fox fit right in from the start. And despite me focusing so much on Fox, that is the Nintendo fanboy in me, that's not to say that the rest of the cast just doesn't compare. One of the earlier missions in the game reveals backstory for basically everybody, and as a result, I really wouldn't be surprised if everybody had their own preferred choice. Like one of the kids is a social media phenomenon, Say what you will, he's gonna have a bunch of fans. Starlink was really a pleasant surprise for me. What we have here is a super solid space exploration and combat game with a ton of great toys on top of it. I definitely didn't expect this game to be bad, but I didn't expect it to be as polished as it was. It can feel fairly bare bones and repetitive at times, but I really enjoyed my time that I put into this universe, and I am super interested to see the future of this franchise. Let's be real, this is Ubisoft we're talking about here. Starlink is probably here to stay, and I am looking forward to it. If you're interested in the game, and you should be, you can check out the game Shipbuilder and buy the game by using the description down below. And now, I have an awesome R-Wing I get to display, and check that out. It did a barrel roll. Don't judge me. <laughs>